Today on Barfly, we are going deep into the Mai Tai. I'm talking, we are going super deep into the Mai Tai. A few months ago, I had said something about doing a, a video on just Mai Tai riffs, and I still want to do that. But then I was just thinking about it. I was like, I can't do Mai Tai riffs unless I do all of the classic Mai Tais. So today, we are going to show you every Mai Tai from Trader Vic's original all the way through the 1970s. My name's Leandro Demon Riva. This is the Educated Barfly. Yes! I'm number three. Let's get into making the cocktails. So, of course, the first Mai Tai that we're going to be doing today is the original Mai Tai created by Vic Bergeron, aka Trader Vic. And a really cool little fun fact about this cocktail is that apparently it was so popular when it was invented that it led to a worldwide shortage of rum in the mid to late 40s and 50s. I just read that. I don't know if that's true, but if it's if so, then that's a lot of Mai Tais. All right, let's get into making the cocktail. Some lime action. So first things first, we're gonna do one ounce of lime juice, quarter ounce simple syrup, quarter ounce orsha, quarter ounce orange curacao, and then we're gonna do a blend of rums because the original had uh, two ounces of Ray and Nephew 17 year, which doesn't exist anymore. Actually, I think there's one bottle in the internet and it's $55,000 if anyone wants to bid on it, but because we're not gonna spend $55,000 on, on a Mai Tai, we're gonna split the difference between uh, an ounce of Martinique rum and an ounce of Jamaican rum. But if you do, you can go to our Patreon. Oh yeah, if you do, you can go to, wait, if you do bid on it, you can go to our Patreon and what? Give it to us? If you, yeah, if you want us to buy it, you can go to our Patreon. Oh, give us the 55 grand and we'll, yeah, you could do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do uh, one ounce of Appleton Estate Signature, one ounce of Martinique Rum Agricole. We are using Clement. Put a little skosh of pebble and then give it a nice whip shake. The old dumpy poo right into the glass, like so. Fill the glass up. With pebble ice, like so. The Easter Island Strong from, from Surfside Sips. Get a little mint. Add a big enough bush, Marius, and strip all these little bottom leaves off so that we just have the sprig, and that's what you want. Give it the old slappy poo, give it the old crushy pants, and we're gonna place that into the glass like so. And then we're gonna take a spent lime. We're just gonna put that spent lime right there. And basically, uh, this is supposed to kind of sit, I put a lot of ice in here, but this is supposed to kind of sit inside the glass. And what this is supposedly supposed to represent is a palm tree and an island right there to kind of just give you the, the sort of the, the island vibe. So there is the original Mai Tai. Okay, Marius, come over here and do your job. So let's, let's have this, have a sip. Kind of drink it down a little bit. Give us some, give us some flavor profiles. What we got? It's very citrusy. Very citrusy. Yeah. Very boozy. Very boozy. A little sweet. And really? Little, seriously? You don't minty. taste any of the nuances in the sweet. Like there's simple syrup in there. There's no. orange curacao in there. There's, there's, mm. there's orgia. I don't really taste the orange thing. Yeah, maybe. It's a little minty. I think he's just know. trying to drink more. That's what it is. There's, there's four more drinks to coming up. Yeah. So you might as well no, taste good. yourself yeah. there, buddy. It's good. I don't know, it tastes like a Mai Tai, I guess. To take your word for it. And there you have it, guys. Money cannot buy a more sensitive palate, I guess. All right, well, there it is. Uh, I look forward to the rest of your tasting notes, Marius, uh, for the rest of these cocktails that we got going on today. So the next one is the Don the Beachcomber recipe from the mid 1950s. According to Jeff Beach Bumberry, who is the basically the historian of all of these drinks, uh, and did all the research, Don the Beachcomber would have come up with this particular Mai Tai in response to the popularity of Trader Vic's Mai Tai. It's just at that point, Mai Tais were so popular that he had to have one on his menu to give to the masses. And this is what he did. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do uh, one dash of Angostura bitters and six drops of absinthe. Cut up this bad boy. 
Then we're gonna do one ounce of grapefruit juice. I like to use the ruby red, although I'm pretty sure that Don the Beachcomber always use white grapefruit. For me, it's a little bit bitter, and if you wanna do the original version, definitely use white grapefruit. I like to use the ruby red grapefruits myself. So that's what I'm gonna do. So then we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Now let's get into the booze. We're gonna do quarter of an ounce of falernum, half an ounce of Cointreau, one ounce of dark Cuban rum. We are using the Havana Club seven year. But if you wanna use like, I don't know, Bacardi 8 or something that you can find, you can do that as well. And then one and a half ounces of Jamaican rum. Add a little Scotia pebble. We're gonna do the same shake and dump technique. So just add that in, give it a nice shake. All right, Marius, I have my doubts about this glass, but it says old fashioned glass and this is a 13 ounce glass. So this is a lot of liquid. Is it gonna fit proper? Look at that. And then we're just going to, I mean, it says pineapple spear, right? Pineapple spear and then a Luxardo cherry. We're gonna do the Luxardo cherries they would have been using in the 50s, which are these guys right here. Um, which I gotta say, man, I mean, I know everyone kind of takes the piss out of these, but I gotta say, I really, just the bright red really makes me happy. All right, come on through. Ooh. Yeah, it's very full. Oh man, you're spilling everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Mm. Interesting, <laughs> what do you think? It's pretty similar, it's boozier, I think. Well, it's a, it, it, there's more booze here. Here, yeah. here you go. But uh, overall, it's pretty similar. Yeah, it's a little bit more acidic. Uh, we gotta clean up the workstation, my friend. Yeah. That is a lot of spillage right there. Um, all right, well, there you have it. There you have it, yeah, similar. Similar. I love these tasting notes. <laughs> I can't wait till I'm off this diet and I can and I can have booze again so that I can actually do proper tasting notes. So after he complained that the other one stole his recipe, he stole his recipe and made something almost the same. Yes, Funny. provided that this recipe was stolen. There you go. That's what he claimed. All right, next my tie up is from the Contiki from 1961. And this is actually a little unfair because this one is obviously a riff on the Beachcomber. So it's kind of crazy how like, you know, Trader Vic did this really nice drink and then you got Beachcomber that came in and sort of changed it up quite a bit. And then the next riff is off the Beachcomber recipe and not the Trader Vic recipe. I just find that kind of interesting, especially because I think the Trader Vic recipe is the better recipe you know, just like balance wise and everything. But you know, who am I to say? So first thing we're gonna do is six drops of absinthe, one dash of Angostura bitters. Then we're gonna get into our juices. We're going to do three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, three quarters of an ounce of orange juice, three quarters of an ounce of honey syrup, quarter of an ounce of ginger syrup, one and a half ounces of Puerto Rican gold rum. We are using Ron de Berlito today. Another one and a half ounces of Jamaican rum here. And as you can see, we are gonna be using our Hamilton Beach and flash blending. So where's our Scoopy Poo? Right in front of you. Ah! Huh. That's what happens when something's right in front of you and you're looking around. The other thing that I, I, I noticed that I did is I put the simple syrup here and it's for the next recipe, not for this one. So there you go. I like to I, I like to say that I'm I'm on top of things, Marius. So it's gonna give us a good scoop of ice, actually, since we're flash blending. And then we're gonna do this for no more than five seconds, according to uh, Beach Bumberry. Let's do it faster. One, two, three, four, five. All right, I did it for six or seven. But I like that. Look at that. You get that nice. Can you see that? That nice aeration. Mm -hmm. But those were very very short seconds, buddy. Were they? Mm -hmm. Well, good, I went two seconds over, so that was about five seconds. It's okay. My seconds can be short. Top this up like so. So grab our nice mint tops, pull these off. Slap it with crushy pants, voila. All right, let's get a straw and let's have our- Expert taste. The guy with the most sensitive palate ever. Taste these, here you go. Look at this really nice one. It's got a little skull in it for Day of the Dead. 
Don't think we've actually used a straw yet, but it's a nice one. There you go. Enjoy that. This is how you drink it? That's how you drink it, I guess. Yeah. What do you think? It's different. What does it taste like? It, it's got this burning sensation of something burning, yeah. But like it's, uh, the, the ethanol it's, from the rum, probably? Maybe it's the booze, yeah, maybe yeah. it's the rum. The, boo mm. yeah, the rum's a little, you know, bitey, bitey but, rum. Uh, yeah, so it's, bitey on the rum, do you get that little, any of the ginger in there? It's like ginger, Oh, maybe it's the ginger. Oh, the ginger, oh, the ginger really just per, would be pretty bitey And too, it's more, actually. yeah, orangey. And orangey, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's three quarters of an ounce of orange juice mm -hmm. in there, so. Well, there it is. That's it, yeah. Bitey from the ginger and orangey. Oh, the other thing that I wanted to mention in this video is that the glassware is just specialty glassware. So I decided to use this nice Trader Jam Sam's. I almost said Trader Jams for some reason. Uh, I like to use this Trader Sam's mug that I got in all my last trip to Disney, which was a long time ago now because Disney's been closed, but now it's reopened, guys. So the next Mai Tai we're doing is from the Surf Bar at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel in Waikiki Beach. This one dates back to about 1971. This is the last Mai Tai that we're doing today. And this particular bar is where Trader Vic first introduced his uh, Mai Tai in the 1950s to the islands, really. Over time, the, the recipe changed and we have our present version of what we're doing today. I also suspect, I don't know this for a fact, and Marius doesn't like it when I say things that I don't know for a fact, but it's Big so Papa educated. thinks that I have heard, right, that the Hawaiian Mai Tai includes pineapple juice. And so when you get a Mai Tai in uh, hotels in Hawaii, you usually get a Mai Tai with pineapple juice. And this seems like this could very well be the genesis of that idea. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is one ounce of pineapple juice, half an ounce of lime juice, one ounce of orange juice, quarter of an ounce of lemon juice, quarter of an ounce of simple syrup, quarter of an ounce of orgia. That was a little, that was kind of a fat quarter, but okay. We'll, we'll dump the rest there. Quarter of an ounce of orange curacao, one ounce light rum, and one ounce of Demerara rum. I don't know, Marius. The recipe says, pour this unstrained into a, an old fashioned glass. Mm -hmm. The old fashioned glasses that we had, like I said earlier, are 13 ounces, but this is so much liquid. I feel like we need to put this into a Collins glass. Or a tiki, I say tiki. A tiki, I mean, we could put it into a tiki glass too. What do we got? Uh, hey, coconut. Coconut, the coconut. This guy's like around the right ounces. It's a coconut. It's not like branded with some other bar. I like the coconut, we're doing the coconut. All right, so we're just gonna do a little skosh like we do. Give this guy a nice, I mean, now that I feel it, this actually might even be small. It's a lot of liquid in here. You know, maybe instead, I don't know if I can reach it, man. I gotta get the ladder. I was thinking this guy, rum barrel guy. This is actually a very rare mug we got from Plantation Rum. Some of you lucky uh, mystery box viewers might have one. Yes, I don't know why you mentioned that though, because we don't do mystery boxes anymore. We might do in the future. All right, this is way too much for, a, uh, for an old fashioned glass though. So we're just gonna pour that unstrained. Oh yeah, it's a perfect mug for it too. Fill that bad boy up with some pebble. And we're gonna do a mint sprig like that. But then it also calls for an orchid if you have one, which we don't. And it calls for a cane sugar stick. Which we don't have. Which we, we don't have. Actually, you know what? I think you actually brought cane sugar sticks from Hawaii last time you were there. And they're probably somewhere in here. They're probably in that bin right there. But, and then also a finger of pineapple, which we're gonna do like so. Oh, you know what? I think I see them in the other bin right there. Other bin le on the left bin. Sugar cane swizzle sticks. We gotta cut these down because they're- Straight from Hawaii, sort of, with a detour. With the detour? Not a detour, just long time. Yeah, it's been a long time, yeah. Now we finally use them. And you know what would have been really sad is if you hadn't found them, we would have, never used them and you you actually went to the trouble to get them just cut a little bit off of it wow look at that it's full that is it's very full there you go ha ha the only thing we're missing is the orchid but that's fine all right marius get rid of some of this volume for us please there you go that was a nice big sip Ooh, how'd it go 
What do you think? Let's get, let's try and get detailed on this one, man. Let's try and get detailed. It's much lighter in flavor than the other ones. It's not like... It's not as heavy? It's not as heavy, It's yeah. crazy. There's three rums in this one, so this one's... Uh, yeah, it's not as boozy, but it's also... So it's lighter rums. The, well, you got the light rum, you got the Run de Barilito, which yeah. comes in... Oh, no, not the Run de Barilito. Sorry, that was the last one. You got your Jamaican rum, all right? But then uh, this Demerara is 86 proof. Mm -hmm. Ooh, wow, this is such good stuff right here. But yeah, no, it's not boozy. Yeah, and it's nice not and... it's not super citrusy like the other ones. Oh, I think you like this one. You've taken more sips of it than the other ones. Or like you've take, taken more intentional sips or something. Yeah, this is pretty good. This one and the, the first one, maybe. All right, well, there you have it. Marius just take, talks, he doesn't talk about flavor profile. No. He just talks about preference. Mm -hmm. This is my preference. Okay. I like this one. This one's good. This one's bad. Yeah, it's not, it's not super, it's not as sweet and it's not as acidic as the other one. So. Well, there that's, it is. That's my, yeah. All right. Cool. All right. All right. I wish I could taste it. I can't wait till I can. There it is, guys. The Royal Hawaiian 1971 Mai Tai and the last of the classic variations. All right. So let's end this video with a little bit of history of the Mai Tai. It was created in 1954 by uh, Victor Bergeron, AKA Trader Vic, uh, at his restaurant of the same name. And the legend has it that he had some friends in from Tahiti and he was testing out this drink and he gave it to them. And when one of them sipped it, he got up and exclaimed, Mai Tai Aroa E, which loosely translates to, out of this world, the best. Upon the success of the Mai Tai, Don the Beachcomber got angry and decided that Trader Vic, who I guess had been a regular at Don the Beachcombers in Hollywood, st had stolen his recipe. He claimed that Trader Vic had stolen the recipe for Don the Beachcombers drink, the QB Cooler, and kind of fashioned it into his own thing. Today, we would call that not theft, but a riff on a different cocktail. And the thing is, is that the other thing that kind of, you know, kind of goes against Don Beach in this particular circumstance is that he was notoriously secretive of his recipes. And that's not to say that somebody that worked at Don the Beachcombers didn't, you know, pass Trader Vic the uh, recipe for the QB cooler, but it just doesn't seem that likely that somebody would do that. It's not impossible, but it's not really likely. And then the other thing is that the QB cooler is just a wholly different drink. It has a few similarities, but really it's a wholly different drink. So even if he was inspired by the QB cooler, it's definitely not theft. I would say that. I think that's all I got on the Mai Tai. I hope you guys make these drinks and really enjoy them. If you like this channel, please hit like and subscribe. Check us out on Patreon and YouTube memberships. Check out our uh, website, theeducatedbarfly.com for merch. We've got uh, articles there. We've got a virtual bottle program that'll put you into the action. Big Papa will scream you out if the, uh, in, uh, not scream you out, but Big Papa will yell you out. Big Papa don't scream, Big Papa yells. Pretty loud, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, but screaming and yelling are two different things. And being loud is also another different thing. I am admittedly a loud person, but you know what? You guys love it. Anyway, before this gets into a little bit of banter between Marius, I'm going to sign out. So I'll see you guys on another time.